Yes, I am wearing the same clothes as I did in yesterday's video, but I got a lot of shit to do tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and record a couple of videos today. What is going on Savage here? Today we're gonna be diving into a random trios gameplay. Now we're gonna be focusing on all of the mistakes that they're making and hopefully putting you guys in positions where you can learn how to get out of these bad situations and avoid making the same common mistakes that most players make. Before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel today, join the Wolf Pack. Also, let's get this video to 1200 likes. We've been nailing 1100. Let's up a little bit. Let's get to 12. I know we can do it. And as always, if you guys are looking for teammates, make sure you join our Discord community and utilize the Looking for Groups pages. We have them situated from United States to the UK to Asia, South Africa, and so many others. And people are coming together in that community, finding teammates and getting a lot of wins. And also, again, I am a new Facebook partner, so make sure you join me over on Facebook to catch the live streams. But again, the series is intended for you guys because as you're mid combat, as you're mid gameplay, if you die, you just reset and you play again. You don't really think about the mistakes you made. You don't think about the mistakes the enemies made and how you could better improve your gameplay. And because this game is very stressful, it does make it harder for you guys to think. So just sit back, relax, watch the video and think about everything that I'm saying. And again, this is completely situational based. Just because I tell you guys to do one thing doesn't mean it's the only option. There's many different variety of gameplay styles that you can utilize in different situations. But without further ado, let's dive into the video. All right, so here we are on a trios game and they've already got their class. Hell yes. Now these guys don't really have anything else they need to focus on except for finding kills and getting a better position. Now the circle is rotating to the east. It will be unfortunately a downtown-ish ending. Um, so get ready for that. When it comes to different endings and different rotations, I despise downtown with a, with a passion. Um, <laughs> he's trolling. Um, mostly because it's it's a very unpredictable scenario, man. But with people camping in different levels of the, of the buildings, um, whether it's ground floor, top roof, or, you know, in the stairway in the middle of the building, it's very hard to predict where anything's going to be at. I, for one, love wide open endings just because predicting enemies' rotations is extremely easy, as well as catching them in the open. When it comes to building pushes, especially with a shotgun meta being as broken as it is, um, I'm not a huge fan of it at all. And with that being said, you definitely need to have some teammates running stuns. Now, I did have a, I did have a comment in one of my videos a couple days ago that gave some good advice, honestly. He said, Savage, he's like, suns are cool, but if you're pushing buildings, flashes are a better are a better decision because it completely blinds the enemy instead of just kind of stunning them to where they can still see. And you know what? After thinking about it, it's kind of right. He's kind of right. Stuns are awesome in open areas and they're still good in buildings, definitely. But if you're pushing in buildings, I've got to have a riot shield user. But if you're pushing in buildings, you definitely want to go ahead and have a teammate with maybe flashbang grenades, especially if you're a huge downtown player. Now, let's rewind the video a little bit. I was too busy running my mouth and I didn't get to talk about what just happened there. But we sit here, we notice there's guys here and we hesitate, right? We don't start shooting the enemy, we ADS, then we read the ADS. But what, what do you see wrong here? Now we already know the out outcome, unfortunately, but he puts his entire body vulnerable. We only see two enemies, it is trio, so where's the third? Well, clearly we already know again, the third is right there shooting us on this corner of the building um, and we go down. So when you guys are engaging in a fight, I would have jumped over this wall and pushed that building and then shot at the enemy or jumped up, shot at him really quickly, and then jumped off instead of sitting up there, looking at him, ADSing, switching my weapons, ADSing, and then shooting. It's just, it just takes too much time when you're sitting out there in the open. So I'm not surprised he went down. Fortunately for his team though, Blue ended up flanking from a whole different direction. He's still on top. Get off. And they do have a precision strike coming in. We need to crawl inside. Oh yeah, we're, we're dead. GG. Now Yellow was smart, bailing from the res to get safe. Unfortunately for him, teamwork was just not the dream work in that situation. But no matter what, when Lopez went down the first time and he got res, he should have instantly jumped off of the top of the vehicle and gotten in a safer position. I'm not surprised he went down again. Um, but like I was saying, Blue had a good plan. He went in from the left side of the compound. That's what you want to do. You want to flank compounds from different directions. That way all three enemies can't just stare in the same direction and blaze down your whole team. You want to confuse the enemy. You want to make them look left, right, up, down, all different directions. So hit them where it hurts most from the sides. Now, we're saying that Blue had a good idea, but unfortunately for him, Lopez really wasn't all there, right? He just didn't understand what was going on. And I'm not going to really hate on Townsend. He, he was just trying to get reses off, but... It just what it didn't sync up properly because of Lopez's huge mistake, huge monumental mistake, twice. When it comes to gulag play, you just got to be good with your guns, man. But now we have a position that people ask me all the time. What do we do? Savage, I'm soloing squads and I'm soloing trios and I'm coming back from the gulag and I have no weapons or money. What do I do? 
Well, he's, he's got it down, Pat. Get a helicopter, get a vehicle, and go to a most wanted bounty. Now, I normally don't grab most wanted unless I'm in a solo squad position, but um, that's exactly the position he's in. So he needs to go ahead and grab his chopper and get out. Get out fast. Get out fast. While he's flying, his team needs to be marking some relatively safe most wanted bounties. If they start most marking most wanted bounties at Superstore, if they start marking most wanted bounties downtown, I'm going to slap the shit out of my teammates, right? They need to mark some most wanted bounties on the edge of the map, preferably farmland. Not to mention, oh, we're getting shot at. Why are we going back this way? Go towards farmland. We're still in range. Go. And there's a helicopter there. He's probably going to die. This dude's probably dead. I'll be surprised. I'll be highly surprised if this helicopter didn't chase him down. They didn't. Wow. And now, if you're in a position, you're in a helicopter, and you see another helicopter that's smoking, and you're not smoking, and you have gunners, and they don't, you need to chase them down and kill them. This is crazy to me. This is crazy. You don't want to come here to grab the most wanted bounty because you're probably going to get killed before you can get out of the area. Fortunately for him, though, Superstore... I said Superstore again. I need to stop doing that. Superstore Stadium. Because of Stadium... Y'all keep slaying me in the comments. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. I'm from New Orleans, so I'm not really all there education-wise. Um, but but we, we're in a position. But he got lucky, man. He got really lucky to get out of stadium unscathed. So now we just gotta play the edge of the map. The last thing I do is fly around big ass compounds. I'm not against him coming to the rooftop to camp. <laughs> Hate saying that. I am against campers, but it, it, we have the most wanted bounty on you. All camping strategy goes out the window. Just camp, get your team back. That's first and foremost, right? We have a pistol, dude. So what I would do in this position, instead of coming to the rooftop, again, I would have made my way to farmland and just flown on the perimeter of the map away from the high compounds, away from people trying to kill me. Nine times out of 10, if you stay on the edge of the map, unless there's a team on the edge with you, nobody's going to waste their time coming from downtown, coming all the way over to you. Um, so again, that's just a better play in my opinion. Now, your tail, I believe, is vulnerable from, from bullets and or rocket launchers. So... I would have played, you can hear him shooting at the helicopter right now. I would have placed my helicopter a little bit more centered because if this helicopter blows up, we're dead. All right, cluster strike was called in and he's dipping out of here, bro. He said, screw that shit, I'm gone. Now look, we're, we're flying in a circle. This is crazy, we have no plates. It's very easy to get shot out of a helicopter. Very easy, I don't care what anybody thinks. And we're going back on the same building, no. Why, dude, they may, they may shoot you as you're trying to land slowly, right? I mean, whatever, dude, to each their own. This is not the smart play at all. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fun match to spectate, boys. I can already feel it. All right, but our teammates coming back, and they have a loadout drop at Stadium now. This is terrible idea. I keep telling you guys, stop flying helicopters over condensed compounds unless you're ready to bail out of the helicopter and fight. If you're doing a helicopter strategy and you're going from compound to compound and you're fighting bitches, by all means, slay out. But if you're just playing safe and passive, you have no guns, you have no plates, just beelining for this loadout drop's a bad idea. You're going over all of downtown. You're exposing yourself to fire station. You're exposing yourself to TV station. You're exposing yourself to all these compounds that there's going to be teams at and stadium as well. So again, it's very easy to get shot out of a helicopter. It's very easy to get shot out of vehicles. So you need to avoid this. However, our team... I think I just speak the shit into existence. <laughs> All right, so normally I'll tell you guys to go for the loadout drop. However, Lopez landed on the building, and so are we. And the reason for that is because your homeboys got shot out of the helicopter, and we don't know where from. So, <laughs> instead of putting yourself in a position to land directly on the loadout, that's pretty vulnerable from stadium and police station and these rooftops, we're going to land on a roof, we're going to clear the area around us, and we're going to try to safely make our way to the loadout. However... If there's a team sitting there baiting it, there's really no strategy about it, right? His teammate goes down, he dies, he risks it for the biscuit. Oh God, here we go again. <laughs> Another helicopter, most wanted bounty strat, question mark. <laughs> Round two. Oh, oh, come on, baby, get him out of there, get him going. I'm ready to spectate another team, to be honest. I'm gonna be honest, you've had your moment. You've had your chance, Townsend. It's time, it's time to move on. There's snipers, look, look at this, look at this shit. Look at this shit. There's snipers on blue roof. There's enemies on the, on the rooftops over here that shot out our boy of the helicopter. There's a team back there that just killed our boy. We're surrounded by teams right now. We're surrounded by teams. And we're just, 
splits, bro. Get them! But again, the reason why I always tell you guys not to fly over areas like this is because if you do go down, you're stuck in this area and this team just came for his ass hard. But we got a new team to spectate, yeah! All right, this team's already in combat. We got a something versus something. We have the bounty to our left. We have an enemy down in front of us. Two of our teammates are engaged with another team around the buy station. So get the execute. Just forget about the bounty for now. Roll out to your team and try to help them. He unfortunately overthrew the concussion or the sun grenade. All right, now this is bad. The MP5 with the Merc 4 grip has amazing hip fire, especially if the laser on it, the 5MW laser, the hip fire will absolutely be an animal. And he comes around the corner. Instead of hip firing, and being able to track the enemy faster, he ADSs, which slows down his tracking time. Fortunately for him, he was already one tapped. But if that guy would have been full health, he would have got shit on for sure. All he, all he did was hit him one time and down him. Now you have two teammates down, you have one enemy left. You need to go ahead and push this fight while your teammates are still alive. Don't allow that enemy to execute your teammates. Also, sniping in a close quarter situation for sure if you're a goat, but if you're not a goat with a sniper, you need to realize that and own that and start hitting shots at the MP5. That was an MP5 range. You could have pulled off the fight, but instead we bailed from the fight. We bailed from an easy 1v1. An easy 1v1. We bailed from it, allowed our two teammates to get executed. We had dead silence. We had a nade. We had a lot of things we could do to outplay the enemy, but because he's got a bounty objective on him, I think that just made him scared. Now, a lot of you guys may be like, well, Savage, he doesn't have full plates. I still would go for it, man. You have two plates, three plates. This ain't Dr. Seuss. Just go for that shit, man. So now his teammate just came out from the gulag and it looks like he's going to be landing on his loot. Now they did die on the edge of the circle. So if he sits on this rooftop for too long, he's not gonna be able to land and get his stuff. It's just wasting time. We do have enough money to move back and buy our teammates, thankfully. Um, but unfortunately for this guy we're buying and for our teammate as well, it looks like they're going to be rocking no loadout drop, unfortunately. So house really needs a man up in this situation and get some kills so his teammates can get some loot. And again, we have the bounty objective with 30 seconds left. We should have already got that kill and get not only gotten the money from the bounty objective, but also gotten the money from the dead body, right? And then maybe in this position, we could have a whole nother loadout drop we could have bought and things like that. But, you know, when you run away from enemies, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? You're probably going to get shit on. Also, look at the bounty. The bounty has to move across in a wide open street. and He's very vulnerable. And he's by himself, to our knowledge. And we have a sniper rifle. So I would hold the outside of this building. And as he moved across, I would take an easy shot at this guy and get a kill while he's in the open. And this is why I always tell you guys to stop playing scared. And that's exactly what they're doing. I don't know why they're playing scared, but they're playing scared. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is he going for, is he going aggro on them? No way. No way. Oh, he missed the shot. Rip, 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 rip. There's another teammate to the right side too. Actually, it might be a trash can. Nope, that was a, that was a teammate. He's got a big Bertha now. And he swapped to your MP5. And he swapped to your MP5. So what the enemies just did right there was confuse this team. The Big Bertha picked up one of their teammates and distracted both of us to look at Big Bertha. Then we started getting shot from the third player. So they instantly both diverted their attention to the third player. Of course, Big Bertha is going to jump out and kill you. Not only did it pop up on the minimap, that's the play, but that's just common sense. So having your sniper out in a close range fight was just ignorant. Even if that enemy wouldn't have shot you over there, the minute Big Bertha got close to me, I swap some MP5 and get ready for a fight. And that comes with practice. A lot of people panic in a fight situation. It's very hard for a lot of people to make decisions in the middle of combat. And again, that comes with practice and calming yourself down. All right, but here we are spectating a lair and he needs to get his teammates back. Well, if Parmley, Parmley loses his gulag, which he just did. Now we got to get our teammates back. We have $200, but these buildings aren't looted. And we got an orange box. So there's gonna be a high probability we can probably get both our teammates back. In this situation, Most Wanted Bounty could have been a good thing, but before the circle rotates, I wouldn't grab the Most Wanted yet because if the circle rotates to the east where we have to cross that wide open ice lake um, and we have the Most Wanted Bounty on our head, we'll get picked real easy. So before you grab the Most Wanted, if it's about to change circles, which it is in two seconds, um, I would wait for the circle to dictate its position and then grab the Most Wanted. But he won't have to worry about that because he's going to have plenty of money in these compounds for sure. And like I was saying, dude, because the circle did rotate, to the east, which is across an open ravine. Um, you definitely don't want to have that most wanted bounty logo above your head because you will be an easy kill. All right, but now here's the dangerous part. We have to buy our teammate back, both of our teammates back, um, in an area where there's a guy bailing out. There's probably another team near this building because it's the Blue Roof building. There's usually campers here. Um, there's an enemy actually going up here. Now we see the enemy at gas station. Why are we going prone? <laughs> it's like it's like players see an enemy and they instinctively, they instinctively 
go prone. It's the craziest thing. You don't want this team to spot you. You really don't. If you're in this position, what you want to do, instead of just laying prone, put yourself vulnerable to be spotted, you want to hug the compound, hug the wall, and work your way through the compound to the buy station to quickly buy back your two teammates. Even if you die, at least your two teammates will be in. And a two-man squad is a better than a solo squad. So I would definitely um, do that instead of this, for sure. Oh, he's going to repeat. Don't repeat. Don't repeat. This is stupid. Oh, there it is. Now they know you're there, and you have uh, one HP. Sick. Oh, I would be surprised if they don't push them. That's exactly what's happening. So the vehicle is now coming up the compound. You need to run around the other side of the wall. Don't let them spot you. Um, This is not going to end well at all. This is not. This is also not the play. Just because you can't see through the grass doesn't mean they can't see you. The grass is not taller than your body. If you go prone in grass, we can still see you, believe it or not. Oh, there's a guy to your left, bro! Oh, no. Hug the compound. Be inside the compound. And work your way to the buy station. This is stupid. Oh my god. No way that the enemy team not see him. No way. As far as the enemy's team's concerned, you just have to be observant. You have to look. You have to look. <laughs> they clearly weren't looking. They clearly weren't looking. What? Let me just bought back one teammate. Why'd we only buy back one teammate? Oh, we're going back now, huh? This is the... Oh, you just busted your ass for all that money and you bought back one homie. Hey, what the hell? P Parmley, get out of the grass! Parmley, no. Not like this, bro. I think Parmley, like, rage AFK'd because he didn't buy back both teammates. And honestly, I don't blame him. Alaire just wasn't thinking because he was panicking. He saw the gas coming. Um... He had an enemy squad right in front of him about to kill him right now. And he panicked and he didn't get his teammates back. He did get the execution, I think. No, he didn't get the execution. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. And this is the reason why you don't play the edge of the circle. Because if you have to cross the ice field to get safe and you're playing the edge, you're going to get shot by another team who's either A, doing the same, or B, gatekeeping this position. Especially since this compound's in front of us. Um, this is just not the play at all. Fire station sitting here was not the play. Even if that team wouldn't have killed us, if there's a team in fire station, they would have got the kill. What not to do. That's what this video is going to be called. What not to do. I love that you guys can see me coming up with my titles while we're while we're analyzing and breaking down the gameplay. All right, so their teammates are in Gulag or are coming back from the Gulag. They got in there literally moments before it closed. And notice how he's, sit and notice how he's sitting here marking other weapons, and that's fine. But there's a little drop on the edge of the circle. We need to rotate that way anyway. So I really wouldn't waste any time doing anything else. I would probably start rotating and start looking at the mountain and kind of analyzing where all the teams are at. We know there's a team to our right-hand side. The helicopter kind of gives that away, not to mention they're shooting at something. So what you want to do is you want to work your way up that hill. If you move soon enough, you can work your way up on the side. But the longer you wait, you allow the circle to push you up, you're not going to be able to. So we're taking too long. We're playing the edge of the gas, and that's not the play in this particular scenario. Some end games, playing the edge of the gas is awesome. But when you have an elevation difference like this, Playing the edge of the gas is not the play at all. Not the play at all. But like I said, we have to go to the loadout drop direction anyway just to get safe. So that's what we should have done originally. We should already be at the loadout drop at this point. Especially since that team is focused on something else. Now, because that team's focused on another fight, you want to kind of look that direction and make sure you're not going to be out position and get shot at by that team. But I wouldn't focus that team. I wouldn't try to fight that team right now. Unless you absolutely have to. Again, it's all based on scenario. Keep your eyes scanning on the right-hand side. There's an enemy right there. Definitely go ahead and shoot at him. He luckily was by himself, but be aware. You want you want the free kills, and that's fine. He had to run out in the open. You got an easy kill, but you just revealed your position. But Savage, he had a suppressor on. The suppressor shots aren't silenced. You can still hear them. They're not as loud. You don't show up on the mini-map, but you can still hear them. You can still be hawked down based on your suppressor. So let's figure out where the next circle's going to be and how to rotate that. Okay. The best position to go from this circle... Is hugging the left side of the circle. You want to hug the left side of the gas and you want to rotate up to the high ground and utilize the trees and the ridges to push this area because this area right here, the center circle, the center of the circle is wide open. There's a couple ridges and stuff, but there's no trees, no rocks. It's pretty exposed. So if you're able to solidify the left hand side of the circle, you'll be able to come in pretty easily and get some kills. Now, I like the fact that Hernandez is sitting here scanning and seeing if there's other enemies here, but we need to start focusing on this rotation because we have 42 seconds to do so. And also, you want to get that position as soon as possible. If you allow other enemies to get better position first, again, they're going to be getting the better position than you, and they're going to essentially gatekeep you. 
Here we go. We're making the right play, but you need to do it fast. Again, we're playing the edge of the circle. I don't mind rotating on the edge, but don't let the gas force you up. We have an enemy over here. Don't worry about him. No, no, divert, focus, focus up. Even if you get this free kill, even if they get this kill and wipe this entire team, again, they're going to reveal the position and the team that's actually safe is going to look down on us and kill us. So in this scenario, particularly rotate position is key right here. You can kill this guy later. Because I guarantee you there's already, there's already a team up top that's holding that position. And now that we've pissed off that team, we never even got to kill him. We downed one, but we didn't get to kill him. Oh, weird. Bauer went down. And look, if they would have rotated when I said to, if they would have rotated early, they could already be up here. And they could essentially wipe whatever team's sitting in the middle and then look down the hill and kill the team that just downed Bauer. So getting position first could have potentially have won them the game already. Not to mention, I'm still worried about the team up to the left-hand side. Oh, this is ballsy. So dude went down. We don't know where the enemy is exactly. He's not pinged or anything. Whoo, he got a lucky boy. He got real lucky. Good on Bauer for marking the enemy though. Right after he got up. I'll, I'll tell you that. There's a glare right there. We're just staring at it. We're like, hey, glare, what's up, brother? What's going on? Can I do you anything? Would you like a large fry with that? But the tide's turned, you know, uh, it, they have the favor right now. They have the favor. It's a 3v2 situation. All we have to do is play this wisely and see where this next circle rotates to. Now, I like the fact that instead of pushing directly up the team, we're taking a wide right flank and coming up from the side of the enemy. They do have a sniper, though, so you don't want to expose your body too long because you may get picked. He got real lucky on that one. Let's see what happens. We go for the execute instead of focusing on homeboy, and there's tracers coming at us, so you think you know what happens next. He didn't go down. Oh, you got to hit your shots, brother. And GG. Well, there that goes. <sighs> Spoke too soon. Spoke too soon. Now it's a GG. All right. As far as the enemy team's concerned, that position, that last duo that ended up losing the game, they had a great position. I don't know why that first teammate left his position to push us. That wasn't the play. He got kill hungry. If they both would have played that hill. They could have just waited for one of us to get vulnerable, which we did. The guy we were spectating put himself vulnerable. That would have been an easy pick for both of them. It would have been a 2v2 fight. And then they could have essentially waited for another pick because they have the higher ground and they have the ridge. And this team had to push out in the open in order to either A, push that team or B, get safe. So the team that got second place should have won the game. They just played it wrong. The first teammate got too greedy and ended up paying the price for it. But I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, again, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, follow me on Facebook Gaming, and also join our Discord community if you want to find some better teammates to play with. But until next time, you have a good one and good luck in Warzone. Thank you again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you check out one of these two videos. And as always, click this button right here to subscribe to the channel today. You have a good one. Until next time, keep on improving.